have some discussion amongst ourselves as well. Um, Bishop Jeff. Um, thank you very much. Yesterday we had a meeting in the City Hall with uh, President Zuma of South Africa and he talked about the end of the world and I said I was quite clear that God did not want to bring an end to this incredible creation that uh, he's brought into being, um, but that we humans were in danger of bringing an end or certainly ending life as we know it. And we, we now wanted to express our concern um, to the world that whatever uh, outcome we, is going to come from this COP17, it will not be nearly ambitious enough. We are deeply disturbed and disappointed. And we, we almost feel as if uh, the human race is wanting to commit suicide because we're not facing reality. We are totally dependent on the well-being of this planet. If we don't get a binding agreement, and Coyota is the only one we have, we continue with the destruction of this planet. Uh, at the faith rally before the climate talk started, we presented a petition signed by over 200,000 people to the President and Secretary of COP17. And the, the demands are well known, a, a fair and ambitious and binding agreement, uh, clear, short and long term um, um, targets for emission reductions and uh, to ensure that adequate finance for adaptation in Africa. But the petition started off by calling on world leaders to be honest. And this is because we, uh, we cannot fool nature and the environment. We might try to deceive one another, but, we're, but when we are not honest with the environment, we pay the consequences. The question now is whether this COP will seek an agreement that places the health and well-being of people and the planet before financial interests and political posturing. At the rally, we ask that South Africa seeks to build a spirit of trust and that all of us, all nations, races, religions, cultures, cooperate in meeting the greatest threat ever to confront humanity. Stop competing, start cooperating. And I'm glad to say that I've heard that word, cooperation, in the plenary. And so it's essential we continue with the Kyoto Protocol. At this uh, late stage, we want the nations of the world to be bold, and we ask our own country to be bold in setting an example to break the logjam and to do this by basing decisions on moral principles of justice and compassion and love for the people and planet. And this is the only way to stave off the destruction of all life on this planet, our only home. The re the, 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 we're asking, we're not helped by news reports <coughs> such as the one yesterday morning that there will be a three billion investment in Richards Bay in South Africa to export 91 million tons of coal a year. Or our Minister of Energy stating last week that South Africa has the, a great resource of coal and that we could, should continue burning coal in the future. So we want to, to continue digging for coal and other nation, nations want to continue to expand drilling for oil and we have a stalemate and we will all suffer the consequences. The reason why I'm talking about our domestic policy is that by making a dramatic announcement we could call on all nations to make the urgent emission cuts needed to stave off disaster. Certainly, historic polluters like the USA need to reduce their emissions dramatically. We find the US position tragic, actually reprehensible. For the USA chief negotiator to say that the USA will just have to reduce emissions more sharply in the future is quite shocking. Every year that we delay sends millions of tons into the atmosphere. For the next hundred years, we can't get it back. The children and the grandchildren of congressmen will ask what their parents and grandparents were doing to be so selfish and irresponsible. The USA is a most religious society, yet their behavior can only be described as sinful because of this refusal to reduce emissions is causing such immense environmental destruc destruction and suffering among people. The ecumenical patriarch, the Archbishop of Constantinople, has called environmental destruction a sin against God and a crime against humanity. As a follower of Jesus Christ, we know that whoever causes any child to suffer 
it would be better for a millstone to be placed around his neck. But it is not only the historic polluters. No country is entitled, entitled to carbon space. The new polluters, like China and India and ourselves, South Africa, need to start reducing emissions from 2012, the scientists say, if we're really going to get on top of it. The great news is that the USA and China and India and ourselves all have the capacity and the technical ability to implement renewable energy which can be up and running within months rather than years. And South Africa argues that coal is still cheaper than renewable energy. What price the health of the planet? What price? We have to keep the planet or regain its health. We know the importance of development for our people in Africa, but it is then essential that the historic polluters assist Africa to leapfrog the polluting fossil fuel era into the new solar and wind era through finance owed to Africa. They have an ecological debt. The target at the moment of these talks is to keep temperatures below two degrees. We find this totally unacceptable as well. We have already gone up 0.8 degrees and we are experiencing horrific storms and extreme temperature extremes. It's going to be a nightmare for average temperatures to increase by two degrees. And for Africa, that could mean an average increase of, uh, of over four degrees. It is clear now that we are being held ransom by the fossil fuel industry. So we sell the birthright of our children to our addiction to fossil fuels. So please, we ask the nations of the world to do the right thing, and then our children will be grateful, and we will be grateful. Finally, when William Wilberforce was battling against slavery, the politicians and the businessmen of England said the economy would collapse without slavery. Now we've been told the same about carbon. And so we have become enslaved. I saw a sticker in the toilets in the ICC room saying, will the last person alive on Earth turn off the lights? And so we have all the energy we need, but no life. Will this COP put the well-being of people and planet at the center before our self-interested financial interests and apply moral principles? And finally, uh, we, are, we, are, we continue to ask that South Africa stands with our African brothers and sisters. And we believe that by following African traditions of Ubuntu and sharing and cooperation, we can show the world the path to a sustainable future. We have the resources. Let us not sell out to the big corporations. Two days ago, President Zuma spoke at a side event on African agriculture. This is most encouraging, but we must must ask that, this, that the support to the millions of small-scale farmers in Africa is for organic agriculture and not a wave of big agro-business funded by outside. <clears throat> We're strongly committed to ecological and organic agriculture as a solution to climate change, but we are wary of putting small African farmers under the control of carbon markets and offsets. Climate-smart agriculture will only work if it does not open the doors to CDMs. To be honest to the environment means that we honestly reduce our emissions rather than offsetting them. And that is the challenge to all nations, that we reduce our emissions as a matter of urgency. Thank you, Bishop.